Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, we have talked about previously electricity and magnetism, right? And we started off with electricity and then we saw uh, how can we have magnetism from uh, electricity, right? Or from current. Uh, and it was defined, uh, magnetism was basically defined as uh, whenever you have a moving charge or a spinning charge, that's when there would be some magnetic field uh, produced. Uh, so that's one thing, but if I say that electricity and magnetism are both two sides of the same coin, then I should be able to get the same thing uh, from magnetic field, as in I should be able to produce current or voltage, which is just electricity, right? Uh, by using magnetic field, right? So we know previously, that electricity, uh, electricity causes magnetism, right? Because if I have a charge, something like this, and it's moving with some velocity v and it's charge q, uh, now if it is moving, it is current, right? Moving charges are current. And current is giving rise to magnetism. What about the inverse of that? Or the reverse? Can magnetism give rise to current? And as it turns out, indeed it can. And that is what we call electromagnetic induction, right? So it goes something like this. If I have a wire and let's make it into a coil of some radius R and connect it to some voltage uh, volt meter, right? So I'm not providing any voltages. I'm I've just I've I've just have a wire which I have turned into a coil. So I basically just rotated it like this, and I have attached a volt meter to it to measure if there would be any voltages, right? Now what I do is I take my magnet. Suppose this is the magnet, this is the North Pole, this is the South Pole. In this position, there will be no voltage in the coil. As you would expect, there should be no voltage. Nothing is happening. We just have a wire that is just connected together. The two ends of the wire are connected uh, together by this voltmeter. Voltmeter is just measuring how much voltage there is. So nothing happens, right, uh, when this is at rest. But now suppose that you move this in this direction, or you can say when you move it inside this coil, you observe experimentally that when you move this, give it some velocity inside the coil, the voltmeter gives a reading. So there is V is non-zero when we have velocity. So when the magnet is moving in, you immediately notice on the voltmeter, it's uh, the, the needle starts pointing to some voltage, right? Now, for the fun of it, you can, see, you can try to move it faster inside this coil. When, once you move it faster inside the coil, that's, uh, you will notice that it produces a larger amount of potential difference or a large reading on voltmeter would be recorded, right? So we see that if my magnetic field or if a magnet enters a wire, a wire carries what? It carries charges, 
right? A wire just carries charges. When the magnetic field interacts with those charges, it causes them to move. And those, when those charges move, that's what, it, what gives us this potential difference or the current, right? Now, what if I bring this magnet inside over here? So it's stationary now here. And at this point, its velocity is zero. So I just bring it in between the coil. I keep it there. I don't move it. You again observe a zero voltmeter reading. No current being produced. But then you say, okay, I'll move it out now. Now, if you move it out with some velocity, you observe current again on the voltmeter. But this time, the needle goes in the opposite direction. So in this time, the voltage is negative. It's a non-zero value, but it's a negative value when you move the magnet outside. Now, this shows, this goes on to show that a magnetic field is indeed uh, capable of producing current or voltages or electricity uh, in the circuit, right? Now, there are some conditions which we can uh, say, or there are some uh, properties that if I increase for example, I made this coil a bit more dense, as in I increased the number of turns on the coil, what would happen? Or maybe use a stronger magnet, what would happen then, right? So these are some things that you can uh, think about. For example, if I increase the number of turns on the coil, I observe a larger potential difference. So number of turns will represent it with N. This implies larger current being produced or larger voltage in the circuit. If I move it faster with a higher speed, as we have discussed, again, more voltage is being produced, right? So increasing speed also means larger V. Now, another thing you could do is use a stronger magnet. So the increasing the strength of the magnet would also imply larger potential difference. So you see that it, the, the, it varies directly with all of these, right? Now, there's one more thing that you can discuss from here, which it is the concept of magnetic flux again, but this time it's called magnetic flux linkage, right? Now, magnetic flux, as you know, it is just the uh, product of the magnetic field density, or sorry, magnetic flux density or the magnetic field times area, as we discussed before in the last lecture, phi is equal to B times A, right? Which is normal to the field when the field, uh, uh, through whatever field it is passing through, right? Now, magnetic flux linkage is a concept in this, uh, in this thing, which is basically just the product of the magnetic flux that is passing through a coil with some number of turns, n number of turns. So, we have n number of turns is like saying n equals one, I have just one circular radius. If I say n equals to two, I have two of these, something like this, right? So this is n equals two and so on, right? So for one loop, the amount of magnetic field lines passing through this loop is defined as flux, phi. If I have more than one loop, then clearly the magnetic field lines will pass through those loops. 
and the magnetic flux linkage is the concept that we'll talk about here. That would just be the number of turns n in this case two times the magnetic flux. So the more number of turns or the more number of loops that I have, I have uh, the stronger the flux is, right? Or uh, which is uh, which I'm calling the magnetic flux linkage. Okay. Any uh, questions? from this thing so far. Any questions? No questions? Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Now we can discuss some of the laws that are uh, written down by uh, the, by physicists, Far for example, Faraday, and then we have another law that's called Lenz's law. Uh, these laws uh, are the laws of electromagnetic induction, right? So we'll discuss now these laws of Now, electromagnetic induction in, or in fact, the whole idea of fields was the development of Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday was not a person who would sit down and do the mathematics and, uh, and try to figure out you know, equations and all of that stuff, right? He was an experimental physicist and he would just perform experiments. And he showed uh, that uh, th this entire thing, how electromagnetic induction happens, what is electromagnetic induction and everything, he showed it from an experiment. And then we had uh, other uh, scientists uh, coming upon, uh, coming forward. And uh, for example, Maxwell, he wrote, uh, or he redeveloped kind of all these equations, the mathematical description of electricity and magnetism, right? Those are called Maxwell's equations. Uh, but initially, magnetism was just discovered by experimenting, right? Now, I myself am a theoretical physicist, right? So, Luckily, I don't have to do an, any experiment over here to show you, uh, but uh, I cannot uh, think of any uh, experiment right now to show you uh, the electromagnetic induction in a much more better way than this example that I use with a, mag uh, a magnet and a coil attached to a voltmeter, right? So the first uh, law of electromagnetism is Faraday's law. Now, Faraday's law is again written by, from the experiment that we just discussed, right? It is a consequence of that experiment and it, it turns out to be true all the time. So it is a law. And the law simply states that when I uh, move the magnet, inside the coil, we saw, when we move the magnet inside the coil, some EMF or voltage was induced in the conductor, right? And then we went a bit further, we, say, we said, let's move it faster and compare it with moving it slower. What would happen? We saw again that moving it faster, the uh, EMF that is produced or generated or induced is very large compared to if you move it slow. That's where, or that's what Faraday's law is. So Faraday's law states that the electromagnetic, uh, sorry, electromotive force induced in the coil or conductor is directly directly proportional 
to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Right, that's what's happening. When, uh, if you go back and look at this uh, figure again, when I was moving the mag magnet inside, the flux linkage was changing because initially it moves through one coil. So flux linkage is phi. Then it moves to another coil, second coil. It becomes two times phi. Then, so first it's phi, then it becomes two times phi, then it becomes three times phi. And num it keeps on increasing until we reach the total number of coils. So it is changing, right? It is increasing or it is changing. So the, uh, the uh, magnetic flux linkage is changing and how fast that magnetic flux linkage changes is dependent on the velocity of the magnet, right? If I move it faster, it will change. The, it will go through these number of coils quickly. So the change would be large. And that is what induces the current inside a conductor or the electromotive uh, force EMF inside the conductor, right? Now, this thing can be written down as a mathematical expression by saying, by observing these things, right? That the EMF, I'm going to call this EMF V, it depends on the number of currents N, right? It depends on the flux, or in total, you can say it depends on N5 flux linkage. And it is how fast does this flux linkage changes, the velocity of this flux linkage. So you divide it by time. This gives you a mathematical expression as N phi over Now, this is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, right? Now, this law is okay, but it's, there, is some, there is some more uh, missing in this uh, whole concept of electromagnetic induction. And that is that, okay, the EMF is induced. We get that. But in what direction? What, what would be the direction of that uh, EMF, right? Which is induced when you move the magnet in it, For example, you could, you, because we have multiple directions, right? We can move it to the right or we can move the magnet to the left. So where is EMF induced? That is given by uh, what's called the Lenz's law. But before that, uh, any questions from uh, this thing, Faraday's law? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Um, so now, uh, yeah, let's go to the next page. There's no space there. Okay. Now, Lenz's law is basically the statement of conservation of energy, right? Or it comes from, because we have to, in physics, conservation of energy is very important. Conservation of energy in physics is only violated at one, uh, in one area. And that is the, the, the expansion of the universe, right? That's where it's violated, but we'll not get into that. Uh, the conservation of energy is a very important law Whenever you, you're doing physics, you have to make sure whatever you're getting agrees with conservation of energy or other conservation principles as well, right? But conservation of energy is one of the strongest ones. And if that is violated, that means whatever you are doing is, has a flaw in it, it's wrong. Uh, so conservation of energy must be true, right? So, and we'll talk about how it relates to the conservation of energy. Uh, wait, wait, one second. Yeah, so it's the statement of this uh, law is 
again, it has to describe the direction. So it says that the EMF induced in a conductor is induced in such a way that this EMF opposes the change which produced it. Right? So if it is opposing the change that produced it, which means that the, if it was produced in a positive direction, the EM, uh, the 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 uh, if you're moving the magnet in the positive direction, right? So uh, actually, let me try to draw it very quickly. Right, something like this, and let's draw it. Okay, so uh, you have a magnet, and suppose this is the north pole, and this is the south pole of the magnet, and this is the north, and this is the south of uh, this coil, if I move this magnet inside this coil to the right, we observe that the, uh, the current that would be produced inside this coil would be in this direction. Uh, is it the, yeah, it's the anti-clockwise direction, right? So this would become, uh, this would be north and this would be south. Right. That is why when you move this inside, you experience some repulsion when you're doing an experiment. And that repulsion is because the coil, the, this, the side of this coil becomes a, a north pole and uh, the other opposite end becomes the south pole. But what if I move the magnet away from this coil or take it outside from the coil? If I'm moving it outside from the coil, then, some, then the opposite happens. Then this becomes, I'm moving this magnet away, this becomes south and this becomes north. And that reverses the direction of the current. It goes in this way. What does that mean for the mathematical expression that we wrote before? Which was V is equal to N phi over T, right? Basically this phi over T is delta phi over delta t, meaning it is the change in flux, right? Now, Lenz's law says, again, that the EMF which is induced is done so that the, uh, it will oppose the change which was producing the EMF in the first place, which was the move magnet, which was the magnetic flux linkage uh, changing. So if it's opposing, that would mean for the, an equation to have a negative sign. So if it's moving to the right, the voltage is produced in the opposite side, right? Now, how is it conservation of energy, right? So it is basically, as I said, it is the conservation of energy. So what happens, right? What happens? Uh, I'm sure everyone knows what conservation of energy is. It, uh, it, vaguely speaking, it means energy can neither be created or destroyed and can only be converted from uh, one particular form to another, right? Now, uh, in this case, the, this induction whole concept of in, induction and the experiment that we're doing for induction, the Electrical energy has to be produced in terms of energy. If I talk in terms of energy, electrical energy has to be produced upon moving the magnet inside the coil, right? And that electrical energy is what is giving rise to the current voltage and so on, right? So moving the magnet has to produce electrical energy. Now for this electrical energy, to be produced, the magnet has to lose some energy, right? 
if it will not lose that energy, then we are violating conservation of energy because the total energy is conserved for the system magnet and the coil. So the magnet has to lose kinetic energy in order for the electrical energy to be born, right? So the magnet loses kinetic energy. Again, this is to keep the conservation of energy intact, right? And this uh, friction, frictional force or uh, op op opposing force that would be experienced by the magnet, because the magnet is losing kinetic energy, right? So it should experience some frictional force for that kinetic energy or velocity to decrease. This uh, uh, force was basically uh, applied or was generated or produced in order to keep the conservation of energy intact, right? So this would mean that work has to be done continuously to keep the coil moving, right? So that's how the, uh, the, uh, the lenses law relates or is just a statement of conservation uh, of energy, right? Uh, sir? Yeah. Uh, why did you put the negative sign in front of the top equation? Uh, all right, just give me a second to keep the coil. Uh, moving right okay so basically again it's coming from uh, the the statement of lenses law right now lenses law if you look over here it states it is a continuation of faraday's law right basically it is just a continuation of faraday's law faraday's law stated that the emf induced inside this conductor is directly proportional to the rate of change of these magnetic flux linkage that is passing through this coil. How fast it changes as the magnet moves further and further into the coil, it will change. So that's EMF induced. But what about the direction of that EMF? That's what Lenz's law states. And Lenz's law says that the EMF which is induced in the conductor is such that it opposes the change which produces it. Right. So if it is if if the EMF is opposing the change that was producing it, what was the change that was producing it? The change in the magnetic flux linkage, right? Delta phi n, delta phi over delta t. EMF is induced so that it opposes in the other direction. So that's why we have a negative sign. So the EMF v is induced in the opposite direction to the direction of the movement of the magnet. Did that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, okay. So, yeah. Oh, sir, can you move back to the previous page? I just wanna take a picture. Yeah, sure. Uh, you want me to, uh, I'll, I'll upload these uh, notes as well. Uh, I'll upload the notes for is it visible uh, right now? Oh yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, I'll upload the notes for magnetism uh, today, and uh, uh, the electromagnetic induction. I'll try to upload them as well. Okay. So uh, yeah, we have less than a minute remaining. In the next class, we'll discuss what would happen if I have this coil vertical and I drop a magnet inside this coil. What would happen uh, in that case? We'll discuss it in terms of Faraday's and Lenz's law. So we'll do that in the next class as uh, this one is just about.